Hi everyone, this is Brett Simon. Um, so we're continuing the series uh, that I promised to make. Um, after looking at the SEAC data, we're continuing the series to do some analysis of that data and give people some projections. Um, I was actually asked, uh, today by the way, we're doing Oceana. Um, uh, so if that's interesting to you, then please stick around. But I, but I also wanted to just touch on something. Um, I was asked um, yesterday, I think it was, why I'm doing projections this year um, when for several years I haven't done any predictions, not like this, not in this much detail and not with sort of solid numbers. Well, the reason that I'm doing that, um, and it, I have to say, it sort of is one of these things where you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Predictions can't possibly be accurate, right? Because there's just too much um, stuff that goes on. Um, and, you know, people don't always beha behave exactly the same way. And political situations are not always the same. And KCC is not always the same and so on and so forth, right? So by making a prediction, I'm almost guaranteed to be wrong, right? And, um, and that affects my credibility uh, and there are a lot of bloody idiots, frankly, who are who have got themselves YouTube channels and are talking about um, DV lottery and misleading people left, right, and centre. And it's it's pissing me off, I have to say, um, because uh, they don't know what they're talking about. They're giving people bad information, and they're doing it because they want some clicks and maybe they want some uh, YouTube revenue or something. I, I you know I have no idea. They would be better off not talking to people because some of them are just bloody useless. There was a woman, um, what was her name? Pasan Nivas or something, Nivasa, who was giving information to Sri Lankans. And it was totally bogus information that would have cost them their cases and misled people. And so I spend a lot of time uh, clearing up those uh, misrepresentations from other people and uh, actually, bad information can cost people their their uh, their case, their visas, right? So when I give some information, which I know is going to be wrong, right? Because predictions can never be wrong, and that attacks my own credibility down the road, then it makes me nervous to do that, and that's you know that's a problem. However, in this year, if I didn't give people a clue where they stand there would be a lot of people who would think they have a chance when actually they've got zero chance. Um, and, uh, and, and I think the Oceana uh, situation is a good example of that, probably actually the best or worst example, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, and when I've explained to you what, I've expl what I'm about to explain, it should be absolutely obvious to everybody what's going to happen. Um, some people still won't believe me, and um, and that's fine. But um, you know, it's it's very bad news in a sense that I'm going to deliver for some people, and people don't want to hear bad news, and so there's a natural human reaction to say no, that's obviously not true, um, and so it gets me a little bit of hatred. I'm not in this for the hatred. I'm in this to sort of save people. Uh, the hassle and uh, and inform people and let me people make good judgments etc. So um, so I think probably with you folks down under uh, you probably will understand that I'm doing this for the best possible reasons I know how because this is a massively over selected year and that means it's guaranteed to disappoint a lot of people. There's just no way around that. Um, uh, and as I explained on a video yesterday. Uh, I just want to also point out, some people don't know my history. Um, I was a derivative on my wife's case in DV 2014. Um, that's how we got our green cards. Um, uh, so I was in America. In fact, um, I came to America on an H1 knowing that I, um, uh, knowing that I was going to be able to transfer to the, uh, to the green card immediately. And so back in 2013, et cetera, you know, I was learning all this stuff. And ever since then, since 2013, I've refined the data, I've put more data out, etc. cetera. Um, but but I, I, I'm saying that because I want to point out that in my year, DV 2014, we had a high case number. What we were told was too high a case number. And, uh, and it was a very over-selected year with 140,000 selectees. 
um, and politically everything was going much better than it was today. So it was actually a worse year to be selected than even DV 2024, in a sense, because although it was very slightly less selectees, it was um, uh, the, the whole world was running better at that time, and uh, and therefore the the numbers were even worse in a sense. Um, so I know where you, I know what it feels like to be uh, in that precarious position where you've you've won and then you start realizing, hey, hang on a minute. Um, I can't just pack my bags, leave tomorrow, and I, and I and maybe I won't even get the green card here because I'm at risk. And I went through that process for well over a year. I know exactly what it's like, and that's why I'm putting this information out for you. Um, and for some of you, you will be able to understand and make your own decisions that your chances are basically uh, 0%, and others will want to wait and see what happens, and that that's perfectly fine. Okay. So with that preamble done, I'm sorry to sort of labor the point, but I'm hoping that that makes sense to you. So if you're from down under, if you're in Oceana, um, go and get your swan dry on, get comfy, go get your Vegemite sandwich, whatever it is that you have to do. Um, and let's talk about Oceana. Okay, so um, this is going to be, the, the analysis bit is going to be quite quick and quite easy, by the way. So you don't have to uh, worry about staying too warm for too long. Um, let me firstly start off with uh, this spreadsheet that I've um, been showing to people over the last few days. Um, basically, this spreadsheet gives us a few things. Um, in there, I've got the selectees per region for DV 2023. There were 2,503 selectees in 2023. And when we talk about selectees, we're talking about main principal winners or applicants and their family. Right, so one case number, as you should know by now, can uh, include a single applicant, if that's all it is, or the derivatives as well on that case, right? So um, there is a, a, a derivative rate that's involved. It it's an average number of derivatives per um, case. And we know that um, in DV 2024 to be 2.1 in OC region, okay? So, um, uh, and it was 2.15 in DV 2023, right? So 2023 had 2,503 selectees, including derivatives. Tw DV 2024 for OC region has 4,450. That represents a 77% increase, nearly 78% increase, um, which is crazy. Um, that's, that's just crazy, right? Um, and... Um, what we also know now is that the highest case number is 4,999, which means that we have a density rate of 42% throughout the whole region. On average, 42% of all of the nearly 5,000 case numbers are going to be real cases, not holes. Holes, if you don't know, are cases that were... Um, they were in the top 5,000 case numbers in OC region. They were sort of, when the draw happened, there were, uh, were 5,000 uh, case numbers there. Um, but various cases were disqualified before the results were even announced, right? And so they were for things like a bad photo that didn't, uh, didn't meet the requirements, uh, perhaps duplicate entries, all sorts of things, right? So 58% of... Uh, the original case numbers have been disqualified already by the time the results were announced in May. If you've got a case number, you're not a whole. <laughs> I had that question from a, a selectee today. Like she, she said to me, uh, you know, I've got this case number. Is, is my case a whole? Uh, because it doesn't show the submit data on the SEAC data. It's like, because she was at MVC. Um, so uh, that, that one made me chuckle today because that was... <laughs> You're not a whole if you've got a case number. That's that should be clear. Okay, so um, so that's the sort of the state of play, right? We've got uh, we've got how many cases? We've got twenty one hundred and twenty cases um, spread throughout the four thousand nine hundred and ninety nine case numbers, um, with um, four thousand four hundred and fifty selectees. Uh, which is a massive increase of over 77% uh, above last year. Now, last year did not go current. 
DV2023 didn't go current. It actually was quite interesting. The last Visa Bulletin had a big increase in the last Visa Bulletin, went up to 2,500 um, as the case number in the final Visa Bulletin. Um, so that was the, the, the highest case number last year. But there were a number of interviews canceled. That final jump, that final jump to the 2,500 uh, number was not necessary, actually, because uh, cases and interviews were cancelled at the last minute. The program closed on September 6th, uh, and every interview after that point, and there were quite quite a number of interviews uh, arranged for OC region, but every interview after that point was cancelled. Um, and e even some people on um, on 221G, which is like a, um, a temporary period of processing after the interviews uh, for background checks and things, the, some of those people missed out as well. So they just they just stopped very abruptly. So 2,500 last year as a case number uh, was too high a case number. Now let me just show you the um, how that looks in terms of the regions. Um, okay, so this is, let me just get uh, Zarthus, yes. We'll have a look at Zarthus, yes, is fantastic site. We'll have a look at uh, OC region. So this is how things looked last year. The case numbers went up to, uh, they were, it, the, the highest case number selected was up to about 2,900. Um, and you can see that there was a pretty much a 40%, um, uh, a little bit less than 40% as a, um, uh, as a, um, a, 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 sorry, a, a density uh, density rate, right? It's called, I call that density, case number density. Um, so the area in blue here is holes um, and any case numbers have, you know, some variation of color there. And then as you can see, there's uh, after 2,500, because there is a cutoff, there's no further cases that get any, uh, any interviews or anything else after that, because there was a cutoff at the last, uh, you know, in the last few hundred cases. Um, so, uh, and you can see, by the way, that there are a number of cases in the red color there that, that were either refused or put on 221G and didn't have time to complete. Uh, there were some re uh, refused cases as well in there, um, and quite a number stayed ready. If we just see the number of cases, we'll look up here. Um, 639 cases were scheduled, with, which accounts for 1,520 people. Um, at the end, uh, 120 people, 122 uh, cases rather, 299 people were left in a ready status, meaning their uh, interview could have been canceled or they simply failed to show up for their interview. Um, 199 people were refused. 190 were on 221G post, uh, which is post uh, interview processing um, and didn't get their visas. So out of the 639 cases that were scheduled, only 367 were approved for a total of 832 visas issued, which is more or less exactly the quota, right? There is a quota for every region. There's no quotas for countries, but there is a quota for region. And uh, the quota for the region is about 850 for Oceania in DV 2024, okay? So, uh, and it was about the same last year. So. Uh, they pretty much nailed the quota. Okay, so we're going to use those numbers. The reason I've just said all of those numbers is that, is that we're going to use those numbers to predict uh, how DV 2024 will go, all right? And DV 2024, just if you want to see the difference in the layout, we'll have a look at OC. Uh, that's the OC region. You can see there's some cases already scheduled and in ready status waiting for their interview. You can see the 42% um, uh, averaged um, uh, density rate, and you can see that cases go up to the 5,000 number almost, right? So that's how, how the data looks if we look on the chart. Unlike some other regions, there is no sort of uh, reduction. It's the same sort of number all the way through which makes it very easy for me to be able to do predictions and very reliably do predictions, right? Because there's no question about, uh, you know, whether this country is cut off or meets a cap or anything like that. 
Now, the other thing that um, that we should be looking at is uh, let me just show you this. This is the the DV twenty twenty four data, um, and what I've done is I've said, okay, for the OC region, uh, where are the interviews scheduled? So this is OC um, uh, selectees or OC cases scheduled at various embassies around the world, right? Um, and, you know, where are they actually uh, being scheduled? Well, you can see very clearly that Suva and Sydney are by far and away the two largest um, embassies in terms of movement and, and scheduled interviews. And these are scheduled interviews up until the end of February, right? Um, we know the issued numbers as well. That's not really too relevant right now. But this is a clear picture of, yes, OC region is off to the races. Um, and we can see that uh, Auckland has um, nine cases scheduled since the beginning of the year. That's not very high, but it's not disastrous. Um, Sydney has 39. Again, not huge, bearing in mind, uh, you know, the, where we're at in terms of visa bulletin. But Suva is off the races pretty well at 137, significantly more than Sydney. Um, and uh, if you look at the number of selectees for the region, which I should show you, uh, let me just get that for you. If you look at the number of selectees for the region by, uh, where are we? We're on that one. Yeah. Let's go. Visa bulletin. Um, we'll look at September. No, actually, we want to look at October. Sorry, August. Right. So to get the selectees for uh, DV 2024, we're going to look at the August uh, 23 visa bulletin. It's got all that um, data. No, it doesn't. It's the September one. It was the September one. Silly man. Um, okay, so we'll look at here. 23, that's the one. Okay. Yes, here we go. Oceana. Right. So, OC region. So uh, there are 700 out of the out of the the 4,450 selectees is comprised by 795 in Australia, 2936 in Fiji, um, uh, New Zealand is 256, right, and then a few in the other smaller countries around there, right. Um, there are 32 in Nauru. Every single year, uh, every year that I've been doing this, 10 years, there's always a candidate from Nepal uh, who, for some reason, chooses, I think they scroll on the, on the mouse. I think they must scroll as they're doing the entry. They, they mean to choose their country of chargeability as being Nepal, and they actually choose Nauru and end up in the OC region, which means a guaranteed disqualification. In that case, will be disqualified. And um, it makes me sad because it happens every single year. And um, and look what we see there. Every single year this happens. There's a case scheduled in Kathmandu Embassy, which is almost certainly um, not uh, an actual OSEA. It's going to be an, um, someone who thinks they've won the lottery in Nepal, uh, but they've got an OC number, and they're going to be disqualified, I'm afraid. Uh, that I can pretty much guarantee. And it happens every year, every single year. Um, so anyway, quick digression there. So um, as we looked at those numbers, 795 for Australia and 2,936 for Fiji, um, what strikes you is the increased number of, of selectees, relatively speaking, between those two countries, and then also for uh, the Kiwis, right? So in their swan drives. Um, so, uh, so when you look at that, it's in one sense, not surprising that there's so many more interviews arranged in Suva than there are in Sydney or in uh, Auckland. On the other hand, it is a bit of a blow if you might have thought, for example, the 2,936 selectees, which is a massive increase from where uh, they've been over the last few years. Um, if you thought those were going to just, those cases were just going to disappear and go away and not be issued, I'm afraid bad news from the point of view of uh, Australians, for example, is that those cases seem to be getting scheduled. People are going through the process and will be issued. And so Fiji is going to do very well. And most of the people listening to this will be Fijians uh, interviewing in Suva, and they're going to do very well because Suva is a, a fabulous em embassy. 
um, and there's apparently no particular problem with those cases going through. So, um, you know, uh, Fijians will get the majority of uh, visas issued to them in DV 2024. Okay, so now you've got, I think you've got pretty much all the setup data. Let me give you the prediction, the predictions now, and I'll explain how I'm predicting. Um, so we'll go back here. Here's my projection spreadsheet. So for the region, I'm, uh, I'm firstly, I'm going to say, okay, hang on a second, let me just make this as big as possible. Firstly, I'm going to say how many cases were scheduled in DV 2023, knowing full well that that number was too many, right? 639 cases were scheduled in DV 2023. Those would be cases that responded. And there is, uh, out of every 100 cases, uh, real cases, there is some percentage of cases that simply never respond in the first place. They never fill out the DS-260. It's someone who entered the lottery, um, and when they win the lottery, they're like, nah, I'm not going to go for that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I just entered the lottery for fun. Or they forget to go and check their results, and they forget until way too, too late, etc. cetera. Um, various reasons, but they're always what I call non-response cases. And so in order to yield 739 cases, I'm going to assume a non-response rate happened already to yield that of 15%, and I'm going to therefore project that in DV 2024, to yield 634, uh, 639 cases, you would need 734 cases uh, uh, in order to yield that, that number. When I look at the first 734 cases in the data, in the SEAC data, that gives us a case number of 1,725. That more or less is the, uh, the minimum level that I would expect uh, to see a cutoff. In other words, it is technically possible to see a cutoff at that, that level. I don't really expect it to be quite that early, um, uh, more or less on a gut reaction. I think it's going to be higher than this. And so I then looked at it from the reverse point of view and said, OK, in DV 2023, what was the number of cases that uh, were current in order to yield the 639 to see if there's something else going on? And there is quite a difference between my uh, working up and the other way of working back down. So there were actually 1,013 cases that went current under 2,500. Again, this is far too many cases. Or, you know, it's all relatively, obviously, but it's too many cases because the 2,500 number um, was uh, was too many, which is why they then had to cancel some cases um, anyway. So, but 1,013 cases went current. Now, if I take 1,013 cases and I look at my 24 data, let me just show you that, uh, which is that spreadsheet, and I go in here. As I've counted down, if you can see this, um, I've counted down, no, you can't really see that, but 1,013 cases takes us down to case number 2350. So the equivalent case number of 2,500 in DV 2023 in DV 2024, the equivalent case number to that same exact level is case number 2350, right? So that would be the same number of cases that went current, out of which they were able to schedule 639 cases. Um, so that takes account of non-response cases. It also takes account of people that submitted their DS-260 but did it too late. Um, and you know some some other scenarios that that meant they could only pick the 639 um, selectees out of those cases. There might have been some delays at some of the embassies around the world, but that's not very likely to happen this year. So that going back to my prediction spreadsheet, then um, that's going to be my upper boundary. That's going to be the most optimistic number that I can think of. That um, uh, that would get current, which gives us then a range of 1,725 to 2,350. My prediction is that the cutoff will be within that range, um, probably more or less in the middle of that, probably around 2,000, maybe 2,100, something in that. But I'm giving a wider range for 
uh, for comfort, just so that I can claim to be right later on. So uh, 2000 or 2100 is about the range that I'm really thinking it is. And that's my sort of wide range there, 1725 to 2350. What does that mean if you've got case number 2500 um, or 2600? Is your chance absolutely gone? Well, no, I could be wrong, right? Um, I, I could have this calculation wrong. Maybe something weird would happen. Every 100 cases is another 42. Uh, every 100 case numbers is another 42 cases on which there's going to be 2.1 people on each case. So uh, every 100 case numbers yields about uh, another uh, 90 people. Um, could they be squeezed in? Could there be some additional quota? Yeah, there's a couple of things that could that could happen to the, so that the numbers go to maybe 25, maybe 2,600. But that really is starting to get into the realms of, um, uh, of miraculous behavior. If you're above 3,000, so you've got a case number of 3,000 and above, it's not going to happen. Got to be blunt with you. Um, there's almost nothing that could happen. I can't imagine a scenario. Actually, I can imagine a scenario. Um, a, uh, an, another pandemic is what it would take. And that, that pandemic was somehow allowing some people to, get, to go to an embassy. Like, for example, let's say the pandemic only affected people outside of Australia. <laughs> um, and it decimated the chances of people in Fiji, for example, just to sort of you know, go that way. That would be good news for Australians interviewing in Sydney. And it would be horrible news for, for Fijians and other people interviewing in Suva, right? Um, that's the sort of level of disaster it would take for uh, us to see a 3,000 and anything, and certainly a 4,000 and anything, right? I mean, you know, there's really no chance for the people with those, um, with those higher numbers, apart from something as dramatic as a pandemic or a war or a localized coup or something like that, right? That's the only thing that's gonna, that's gonna affect uh, large numbers of people in one country and leave the other countries um, uh, free to continue on, continue on their way. Um, other than that, I don't believe we're gonna see the case, uh, the case number in the visa bulletin go above about 2350. Um, and so if you're in that range between 1725 and 2350, you really just have to wait and see. If you're at 25, 2600, uh, again, I would say wait and see. Why not? You know, you're not just going to walk away and forget all about it. Um, you know, but what you can do is forget about it on a month-to-month uh, -month basis and just, you know, sort of check back in May, June, something like that, um, and see how things are going. The final visa bulletin that will set in stone the final number is going to be published between the 8th and the 15th of the, of the month in July. And that is when the final September interviews are set, just after that visa bulletin. Between that point, when the visa bulletin is published, and the end of that month, right? So if you were to be waiting to see if you can go current, you have to wait until about mid-July. Um, and then once you've seen the visa bulletin in mid-July, mid that's it, game over. Um, uh, the visa bulletin would not be adjusted after that point. Uh, the next visa bulletin that's released, the, or, the one that's published in August, will be about the next DV2025 program. So they're not messing with the uh, DV2024 numbers at that point, okay? Okay, so that's my range, that's my prediction. Uh, it's given to you with the best possible intent. Uh, it's given to you so that you don't waste your time and your emotion and everything else if you've got a completely hopeless number. And hopefully for some of you, it's cheered you up because maybe you had a, uh, you know, a 1700 number and you realize that that sounds like a very high number compared to 850 um, uh, visas available. There is a reason why, you know, the holes means that the numbers go higher. Um, but like I say, I fully understand that I'm disappointing most people, right? Um, uh, I'm, I'm telling more people that they're not going to be current 
that I'm saying to people, you are going to be current. So I, you know, I feel terrible about that. But honestly, I really would rather tell you the truth than give you the BS. And I'm hoping that you'll understand and uh, and appreciate that. Okay, that's it. That's all I wanted to talk to you about. Um, uh, that's all I have for you this evening. Um, I do want to, I should, I just caught sight of myself. I do want to apologize about my gray, almost white beard. Um, I do want to ask you to give me a thumbs up on this video if you can. Um, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, even if you're in a case number range above what I've said, you'll want to know a little bit about what happens over the next few months. So, you know, come out and hang out with me and we'll um, share a Vegemite, Vegemite sandwich together and, um, and uh, drown your misery, you know, your miseries and uh, um, as you find that things turn out as I said they would do. Um, but yes, please do uh, give me a thumbs up, thumbs up on, the, on the video anyway. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye now.